Welcome to the Ange TV Show. If you click this video, it's probably because there's breaking news or you're tuning in for my daily briefing. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There's three ways you can support the Ange TV Show. Visit our merch store at the Ange TV Show on Teespring and purchase merch now. Or you could send a super chat. And finally, you could become a member of this glorious channel by hitting the join button at the bottom of the video. All right, guys, enjoy the show. What's up, guys? We are live. Today, guys, we have a special guest. He comes from a place not too far away, okay? The greater Toronto area, guys, okay? He's a comedian coming from Hamilton. Uh, he, I actually met him at a Christmas special on uh, Claudio's channel. What's up? Erica's in the building, guys. My girlfriend is here. Just, Key fan, Just Keys fan is also there. I noticed you, bro. I noticed you. Uh, Raul is also in the building, guys. Welcome to the Ange TV show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share this video, guys. Yeah, exactly. Just Keys fan is my biggest fan. So without further ado, guys, let's let on Mr. Eric Johnston. Hey, what's going on, Angelo? Angelo. There he is. There he is, guys. And I, re I already, you see that Carolina jersey in the back over there? Oh, the random yeah. uh, jersey of Carolina? I already know I'm going to get roasted. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met you, I was like, what the fuck's with the Car Carolina jersey? I'm like, aren't you in yeah. Montreal? What are you doing? Yeah. You're going to run well, you out of town. Listen, guys, funny story. I was uh, in the States, and they had a sale at Reebok. So, you know, when it's cheap, you know, it doesn't matter Classic what team it is. Classic Montreal story. <laughs> Bro, what do we do? It was on sale. I don't like the team, but I like to save a dollar. <laughs> Just Keys fan said, yeah, Eric, you're a beautiful redhead man. Are you redhead? No. I'm a, I'm okay, a, you're not redhead. Maybe it's okay, a... It might be Maybe it the could, background. Maybe. It could be the. Know. It could be my hair. It could be the rosacea. I'm doing pretty good with rosacea lately, though. I might feel all right. Ross said, "Eric, go ahead, roast Angelo's jersey." <laughs> He's already done enough of it. I just love that he just has an open closet. Like we're clearly in your fucking bedroom. And <laughs> actually, this isn't my bedroom. It's my brother's old room. And yeah. that's actually his Pax wardrobe, which I filled with stuff to make it look somehow like a sports show. Yeah, it looks so, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, it's your first time coming here. Why don't you introduce us to everybody here that uh, that, that doesn't know you? Uh, how could you not know me? Um, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Eric Johnson, stand-up comedian, uh, professional touring stand-up comedian, uh, usually, uh, and an actor professional MC uh, from Stony Creek, Ontario, just outside of Hamilton. And uh, I'm here tonight to uh, shoot the shit and, uh, you know, roast Ange a bit, meet some of your fans, YouTube people, <laughs> you know, go for it. Hey, Jess, say hi to me, exactly. not just Ange. What's Jess going on Sorrell, here? Jess Sorrell's in the building, guys. One of the biggest fans of pretty much everybody, Jess Sorrell. She's from Australia, by the way. So, Seriously, Eric, Jess. I see you got that vino, that wine, which I got to get, bro. Seriously, and look yeah. at how pretend Italian I am. I'm not drinking out of a wine glass. I got a juice glass. <laughs> I got water, bro. Nah, water. you're that, weak, bro. Got. You're weak, bro. Also, I just want to say, who the f <laughs> uh, can, I, can I swear on this thing, by the way? Yeah, I no problem. Swear? No okay. problem. I was going to say, who the fuck is buying your merch? <laughs> I want to know how many fucking people have oh bought that God. merchandise because I'm going to guess nobody. <laughs> oh, my God. Big Spooky A said, bro, he has the EA Sports voice. Please try to do it. Is he talking about Eric? Here we the go. EA Sports voice. EA Sports. It's in the game. There you go. Bro, there you, you go. should be a voice actor. Seriously. I am. Why do you think I have this set up oh, for? You, you, are a voice actor. you think it's for you? This is for my job. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, so listen, Eric. Uh, you're a very talented guy, right? You could uh, you could act, you could do comedy. Can you sing? I used to do a little musical theater in my time. A little musical theater. Really? Yeah. I also, when I was like 13, I, I thought I was Dallas Green, so I recorded a song called "Moonlight <laughs> Nerves," and they almost <laughs> fucking ran me out of Hamilton. It was so bad. The song was awful, Inch. It was bad. Wow. Okay. My friend, my friends still bring it up. Really? That bad? Yeah. Because I'm kind of going to ask you about your worst performance, but that's later on there. So <laughs> yeah, I want to know, Eric, like, did you, did, were you born rich or <laughs> were you born in money? Like, <laughs> no. I mean, like, how did you get started in entertainment? Oh, buddy, quite, quite the opposite. I, I, I wish I was born rich. I'd be a lot further along. Uh, on this, I'm just going to reply to this comment, the anime voice actor. I've done some, <laughs> uh, I've done some anime. Uh, 
I did something. You guys remember when those when you saw those anime filters on Instagram or on uh, Snapchat or whatever, and everyone looked like a cartoon character? I did something yeah. on my TikTok, and I like made up a line. I'm like, "Huh, Hiroki, we need to get to the castle." <laughs> or whatever the lines were, I just made it up, and all these people were like, "Oh my god." Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, I got I, I come by the entertainment industry uh, honestly. Uh, my yeah. father was a professional wrestler uh, in the really? WCW in the 80s and 90s, Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame. Also okay. massive in Montreal in international wrestling with Dino Bravo. Wow. Uh, my, yeah, my dad's okay. name was Bullwhip Johnson, Bullwhip Danny Johnson. So uh, that's why you like uh, wrestling, because I always see you talk about wrestling, so that's yeah. why you like wrestling. Yeah, I like wrestling. I mean, I, I don't really follow much of the current product. I'll, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll go and see what's up, and I'll watch Mania, or I'll watch the Rumble, but... Other than yeah. that, I don't care. I like the, I like the documentaries that they're making about the old wrestlers and stuff. Oh and yeah, what's it called? That documentary. Oh, there's check it out. there's tons. There's a new great one out called The Dark Side of the Ring, and it's okay. about all like the sad, crazy stories um, about wrestling, like people dying, people getting murdered, people like Owen Hart uh, falling. Yeah, off Yeah, exactly. That's a yeah. two part episode. It's called The Dark oh, really? Side of the Ring for those listening. Um, okay. And there's there's a bunch. There's one. There's one. Um, there's one uh, that j it's on Amazon Prime called like 350 Days. A bunch of my dad's friends are in it. Uh, okay. Resurrection of Jake the Snake. Um, what else is there? there's tons? I watch them all the time. I gotta check it out, dude. Because yeah, you know we I actually have uh, Joe from the Ring that comes in every once in a while. Obviously that's right. he loves he loves wrestling, right? And I gotta I gotta uh, I gotta get back in uh, on the train of watching his episodes and everything. And also the Dirty Heels podcast they do wrestling too. I don't know if you know. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Of course. Um, but uh, listen, uh, what's his name? Ryo Cat says, what's your Instagram? I will follow you. I'm a good voice actor. Okay, so Ryo Cat, guys. I was going to say that might have been a little news. racist. At the Go top ahead. of the chat, all you have to do is click on Eric Johnson's link tree, and then you can find out his Instagram, all his social medias, and also his tours so yes well eric's gonna tell us about his tours uh pretty soon so that's yeah interesting. well it's you can follow me though anyone who don't want to click it's at eric johnston who e-r-i-c-j-o-h-n-s-t-o-n-w-h-o eric johnston who um yeah follow me on instagram i'm putting content out all the time dance videos stand-up videos uh you know pictures of me flexing you know um Bunch of stuff. Come check out my page, my Instagram page. That's also my website at uh, ericjohnsonwho.com, at Eric Johnson's Twitter. It's just Eric Johnston Who on everything. Just type in Eric Johnston Who and you'll find me. All right. So that's Dude, it. Seriously, uh, Eric, when, I, when COVID finishes and, you know, I start traveling and stuff, maybe to Toronto, obviously I want to be going to Toronto, do some stuff, crazy stuff, maybe. I got to check out your shows, bro. Seriously. Oh, please. I would love that. Here. Are you going to be coming here? I was supposed to be coming there this weekend to film a commercial. Uh, really? Yeah, I don't think I got it because it starts filming tomorrow and I haven't heard anything. <laughs> okay, so. Crazy Shit Media has a question, okay? He said, can you flex live? Please flex your arms. Oh, buddy, you crazy are shit. I'll, I'll give it for guys, the people. Look at, look at, oh, uh, let me make this full yeah, screen. Try look line. at those guns, guys. Hold look on, let me make sure. Hold on. <laughs> Put this in your spank bank, guys. Put it in your spank there bank. There you go, guys. Uh, Eric Johnson, uh, my only fans over here. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, how much money are we getting paid for this? I appreciate when someone asked me to flex. I just did arms. Caden Plays is in the building, one of our members. What's up, guys? You could become a member too. Hit that join button. Become a member today of this glorious channel with the Carolina Hurricanes jersey in the back. <laughs> Okay, guys. You, oh my God! Crazy ass media says he's erecting. Uh, well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show, baby. Um, but yeah, oh I just wanted—I was just laughing at how Montreal Italian you present your fall of the pit. You, you yeah, can yeah. become a fan too. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Hit the subscribe, smash the like button, bro. What are you doing? Bro, look like one of those soprano guys. Look like uh, one of those soprano. Uh, uh, the end show. See, that's this is what you need to do for your merchandise because no one's yeah, buying your fucking yeah. DN show <laughs> logo. You got to come up with the funny things that you say on the show exactly. and, put on, and put them on t shirts and cell phone cases. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like, uh, like, you know, chow, chow. Yeah, 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 try with chow. Um, but yeah, you just come up. My, all my merchandise has nothing to do with me on it. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it's got all kind of things that I say on stage or jokes that yeah. I reference on stage. That's all my merch and that shit sells and brawl. Caden Place said Spank Bank. Let's put uh, it in your Ryo, Spank Bank. Ryo Cat says you can do Japanese voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. And if I try, I'll get canceled. So yeah, I, there you go. That's a good reason not to do it. 
Sub to your boy, Kaden, please. Okay, guys. <laughs> Dude, you're Dude, you're You can wrestle with Jeremy Prophet. Who's Jer I heard of this I Jeremy Prophet. I've heard the guy. name. My friend is RJ City. RJ City is one of my yeah. very close friends. He's a, he's a professional oh, really? wrestler at Toronto. And uh, he's in the new David Arquette documentary called You Cannot Kill David Arquette. And he also just re released a, uh, a documentary of his own on Fight Network TV. On, and it's on YouTube as well. It's called Re RJ City Wrestling Raconteur. Nice. Uh, I talk to him every day. So he's, I did, actually did an interview about him um, <laughs> in some newspaper from Montana or something today. They called me. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I think you asked me how I got into stand-up comedy about an hour ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, basically, I was asking you, how did you get to do comedy? Like, there's got to be something you did to get noticed. Like, was, like, how, how did you just start an entertainment? That was my question. Right? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, we got distracted with Japanese voices in my arms, but uh, Eric, are you interested in men? <laughs> <laughs> this see this is the thing when you do these live streams on youtube they get fucking yeah. wild um yeah. <laughs> i'm not interested in men i'm interested in male fans though so you can follow me uh, <laughs> uh and I, I i i don't have a girl right now i'm a pro I'm, I'm, I'm on these streets you know i belong to these streets uh during covid so i haven't really <laughs> seen anybody uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Okay, I thought you were married or something. You know, the no, looking guy, no, this got the is guns, all, this funny is all guy. Fake, fake jewelry. It's all fake. Fake? Oh no. Okay, I, went my, I saw well, the I was... advertisement. I said I was gonna ask him where he got those rings. <laughs> <laughs> no, most of them are actually real. The only thing this one's actually fake. The rest are real. And the bracelet's fake. And the watch is fake. The rings are real. Okay, guys. Um, yeah. Anyways, but, so how did I get into stand-up comedy? Great question. You asked yeah. forty-five minutes ago that we can't get into. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so my dad professional wrestler uh yeah. i wanted to be like him i idolized him he was touring all over the world i wanted to get into the entertainment industry didn't know how uh yeah. so i i signed up for dance lessons because i thought well i'll get on stage i'll get to perform i don't have to wrestle anybody i can just dance <laughs> so i danced competitively for seven years across ontario and then from there, I transferred into musical theater, from musical theater into theater, from theater into film and television acting, did a bunch of TV shows. Um, and uh, <laughs> it turns to cancer, to try to sell promotions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, um, oh my God. <laughs> from uh, from film and television, I, I transferred into film and uh, film and television into stand up comedy. I started doing stand up comedy in 2010. I was living in Vancouver. Was going to the Vancouver Film School. Went to an open mic. Signed up. Haven't stopped yeah. since. That's 10 years. 300. You know, 200 shows a year. Mm -hmm. uh, 300 days on tour a year, except for COVID. And uh, and haven't stopped since. Been all over North America. Open for Russell Peters. Open for Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, have performed at the Comedy Store, the Laugh Factory, have done my own headlining tours across Canada and Chicago, New York, L.A. So it's been a long ride. It's been a long Ra ride. Raul just gave his credit card information and he said, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Listen, what I'll like, buy, but I'll figure it out. Eric, they already love you. You're, you're, you're becoming like the mascot right now. Yeah, buy uh, my merch. <laughs> uh, oh, someone's getting nervous. I hear that fake laugh. <laughs> well, since this show's a little loose, I'm going to vape. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to mute myself, yeah. though. So go ahead. No problem. You can boxing match with Driver Sensei. Okay, I don't know if you know who Driver Sensei is. He's a YouTuber, and he, we hate each other. I hate him. He hates me. Like we, it's just one of those rivalries. You know what I mean? <laughs> it sounds great. So yeah. he's like, you can box Driver Sensei. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll beat the fuck out of him. So if you want it back, <laughs> well, there you go. I got, a, I got some, uh, I got a buddy. Got yeah, a here we go. Now I'm gonna have YouTube beef. All you losers are gonna come after me because I said I was gonna punch <laughs> Master Sensei or whatever his name is. <laughs> Driver sensei, right? Okay. He's like obsessed with him. He goes to his live stream. His name's Alex Ugly. He's from like freaking Georgia or something. I don't know, but he's he's annoying. He drove he drove Trump supporters to the polls. But anyways, what? Uh, anyways. <laughs> Joe anyways. Fo in the ring is in the building, guys. Joe Fo. Um, what's up, Joe Fo? Jo Eric, you know Joe Fo, right? Joe yeah, Fo so I, I've never met him. I don't think have I? I don't know, but yeah, I've definitely heard you say the name and other people say the name before. So yeah, nice to see you, buddy. Oh my god, he's he's so cool. Now I'm going to buy a vape. Listen, guys, I don't smoke. I don't. I don't. I, it's addicting, and don't get into it. I'm stuck. And it now that I'm having some red wine, it, it's I'm back. Vaping it looks addictive, guys, and it looks so good. Like, what it is. is it taste like? 
tastes like a slushy or something. Oh, this one tastes like this. Why I have the liquid here because I'm all, I'm ready to rock. It's called Rasbataz, and it's blue <laughs> raspberry. It's pretty douchey, guys. I gotta admit, but I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I never really smoked cigarettes to begin with. I got into vaping way heavier than I ever did smoking, yeah. and uh, now I'm addicted. I vape all day, every day. I wish I can't. Sometimes I can't breathe. I'm running on the treadmill. I cough up fucking vape liquid. It's gross. So don't get into vaping <laughs> if you're a kid out there. And uh, <laughs> you said so. You're a team Ange TV show, Eric Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm on. It's the only show I'm on. But if fucking Boxer <laughs> Huey has me on, I'll fucking go on his show too. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I got no loyalty. Put me on the fucking show. Who cares? Uh, uh, listen, Eric. Uh, you do comedy in Toronto. You do yeah. comedy in Montreal, right? Yeah. You've done comedy all across Canada. Is that correct? That's correct. Many times. Did you do Saskatchewan, or did you do that? Did you do it there too? Yeah, I did a tour of, I did six sold out shows in Saskatchewan, 25 sold out shows in Alberta, 25 sold out shows in, uh, in, that in, is in money, British bro. Columbia. Money. Yeah, well, you know, I actually, I do all right when there's not a global pandemic, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah uh, he said, yeah, it. don't be surprised if he flashes us in an hour. Uh, he's off a lot of druggies. <laughs> if that's you or me, I don't know either way. I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull a titty out. I don't care. Well, get Bonga to follow me back on Insta. You're the Veep King, Eric Johnson. <laughs> Are you people following me here? I'll check. I want to. I want to see my followers go up live right now on Instagram. The daily struggles. You're the villain. <laughs> Hold so on. Like I got, I said, I got um, magic venues. That's not it. Oh, I got Jess though. Jess, thank you. I Jess see your Sorrell. follow. Following you back, guys, Jess. Go follow Eric Johnson at, at Eric Johnson. Who? What you guys need to do is click the link at the top of the chat. It is pinned to the top of the chat. Go check out Eric on YouTube. What are the links on there, uh, Eric? There's YouTube. I don't know. Just it's, it's everything. YouTube, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Instagram, my website, and my bands in town, uh, which is a, a touring app where you can see all my tour dates. There's nothing in there right now, but uh, there yeah. usually is quite a few tour dates in there. That's how you can find me on bands in town. <laughs> One millimeter defeater. What is he talking about? I think he's talking place? about your dick. Uh, <laughs> Bobby short to add him to show. Okay, so there's a show called Daily Struggles. I'm actually a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, he's basically saying add you to the show because this Ryocat guy, he makes characters out of all my guests. Like, don't be surprised okay. if there's a meme of you hey, yeah, like on the funny. internet right now because <laughs> he always makes memes of all my guests. So, Eric, uh, like Hold I said. On. I muted. Hold on. Here's a meme for you. One sec. Watch this. <laughs> Screen cap this. Make a meme. <laughs> Guys, meme that, please. Meme, please meme it. Meme that. Tag Eric Johnson, who Johnson, or Eric Johnson, who, sorry. Jesus Christ, Ange. You're Good a fucking, t you're a host. G pull it together. <laughs> Good question, though. Why the who? What does the who have to do with anything? Well, here's the thing. I used to own a company in 2014 <laughs> okay. called Who's We. Uh, okay. And Who's We was, it was a, it was a basically a entertainment brand. Um, it was a live event brand. It was a uh, video marketing brand. Uh, it was all these things. They're all brand branded, and it was come from the party. Like when you're saying you're going to a party, mm -hmm. and they say uh, we're uh, we are going to a party, and someone else goes, "Well, who's we? Who's we? Who's going? Who's we?" <laughs> so I, uh, I that's when I started. But then the company dissolved, and I already had a yeah. bunch of stuff for it. But then also, okay. I thought it'd be funny for my stand up comedy because it's like Eric Johnson. Who? Like who is he? Yeah. I've never heard of this guy. And then eventually, yeah. it I become so. You know, known that it becomes ironic type situation. So that's why it's yeah. Eric Johnson here. So the last question that I was saying that it's like an hour. I'm trying to uh, sell this. Yeah, question. Jesus, we're at 18 <laughs> minutes and you haven't fucking asked a question yet. <laughs> so, anyways, it, listen, you did comedy in Canada. Where would you want to do ca comedy? I, like, I'm I'm sure it's a bunch of places in the states, right? But like, where exactly would you want to do comedy? Your dream? Where would it be? Well, here's the thing. I I love to tour anywhere. I love Canada. Like, I I love. I love working in Canada. It's it's mm -hmm. um See, here's a problem with the show Ange, is you keep bringing up the fucking comments and you get distracted and you distract me. Cuz I see it fucking show up on the bottom yeah, know, of my screen and I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is going on here? Yeah, you see the thing is it's because I want to go through the comments cuz a lot of comments come in, so I want to go like I want you to see the comments, right? So you can respond to it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, don't do it after you ask me a question. <laughs> okay, no problem. Go ahead. Continue, Eric. Listen, you can answer the question. Listen, no, I, I want to answer the question. Can I answer is the, the question, question, and then we could you could go to the comment. That's thank that's the you. Real See, thing. That yeah. you should, 
let me give you a little, <laughs> let me give me a little something to do on this show. It's ask the guest a question, they answer, and you say, "Hey, look who's here." Then you go through the comments because you're bringing up these fucking stupid ones, the two millimeter shit. And I'm like in the middle of telling you, asking me a question, and I see this shit. Listen, you got a great yeah. show here, Andrew. I'm just trying to give you a little tip. There you go. Uh, anyways, okay, go ahead, yeah. I love working in Canada. I've been touring this country for the last five years nonstop. Um, minus the last year because of COVID, but, um, you know, I've, I've been up and down and across and North and South and East and West in Canada. I love it. I was making my way into the U S market. Um, see, Andrew, you're fucking killing me here. <laughs> you're killing me. I can, that's a nice one. Leave that one up. Hope everyone has it and having an amazing day. Okay. You leave, okay leave look that what Chris Yes said. He's defending me. He said, hey, disrespect Angela. I defeat your pecs. <laughs> I think he said <laughs> deflate, deflate, deflate yeah. and pecs with a Z. <laughs> you can't come for this body, bro. Um, <laughs> okay. I was working my way into the U.S. market. It was it was great. I was doing sold out shows in Chicago and New Jersey and Atlanta, Florida. Did a couple shows down at the Laugh Fa- the I'm sorry, the Comedy Store. Yeah. In Los Angeles, uh, the Laugh Factory in Chicago, the Comedy Bar in Chicago, and then mm-hmm. everything shut down. I had a full U.S. work yeah. permit to go as I, as much as I wanted to, and I was passed to headline all these comedy clubs in the states, and yeah. and then it all got taken away. So I've just been kind of hanging out, doing content, doing podcasts. Like if you ask me, I'll come on your <laughs> show. Obviously, I'm fucking go. here. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Guys, listen, if you want to have Eric John, look, he's a great guy. You know, he's sarcastic. He comes off like a prick, but he's not, guys. He's doing it all. <laughs> it's all good in, uh, how do you say it? Good in rainbows. What's that yeah, word? Yeah, it's all say? sunshine all and rainbows. Sunshine and rainbows, guys, seriously. Uh, but you know what, guys? I've been roasted quite a bit of times at comedy shows, <laughs> Eric. Like, every comedy show I get, I always get roasted. Like, one of the comedians, okay, it was during the, the second wave when everything opened. Like, before mm-hmm. the second wave when everything opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, we all gained weight during COVID. Isn't that right, sir? And he looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I don't do, I don't uh, do that in my show. I, I, I only uh, go into the audience maybe once. Uh, and, uh, yeah, welcome to the show. I'm just trying to give him some tips. I've been in the biz a long time. Um, so, Eric... Um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. You looked like you were finishing something. No, I was just gonna say I don't do crowd work, so I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, crowd work is what that guy did. He made a joke about you or whatever. I have yeah, one yeah. joke where I reference the audience and I ask a girl her name and I make the rest of the joke about her. That's it. That's the only time I go yeah. in the audience in my entire hour. So, mm-hmm. you know, I understand the guys that do you know crowd work comedy and all that kind of shit, but uh, I just don't do it. And uh, so, yeah, I get it. I, I'd roast you in real life. <laughs> oh my god please join my elite forces or my army to defeat ken viet okay ken sure. viet is a japanese guy that he watches that i don't know he's obsessed with <laughs> sounds great i'll do it <laughs> so eric listen you heard about the mike ward and uh the jeremy gabriel situation yeah for those of you that don't know guys mike ward is a comedian he made a pretty like a bad joke about a guy who has he's disabled a small guy that's disabled and it basically caused havoc they had to go to court he, go, he kind of got canceled but he's not he's not canceled right Eric? He's no no mike's canceled. still working and will always have a career and uh, you, you got kind of the story what happened is yeah. what i know from it is there was a there was a there was a story about this uh, this montreal kid who was dying of some sort of cancer or disablement or something and they um um See, this is the thing. This guy's entertaining, bro. Everything else boring folks who keep everything cool. <laughs> See? That's fun, right? That's uh, a compliment, Derek. Yeah, well, thank, I don't know if it's about you or me, but... Uh... <laughs> no, no, it's about you. It's about you. You, that, you know what? I'm going to say something. Let me open the screen here. Listen, Eric, uh, he, they like that you're just like, you know... Oh, what the? Crazy S was hidden. Ryu Cat, why did you hide Crazy S? Okay, he'll be back with another fake account. Because this guy, he just he comes out with a lot of fake accounts. I know who he is. Like, he's funny and everything. But yeah, yeah. he has a lot of accounts just in case he gets hidden, right? So, so he'll be so, back. Don't worry. So you're streaming <laughs> this to your YouTube channel or somebody else's YouTube channel? It's my right? YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So you have yeah. a bunch of people coming in. And, and... Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I have obviously I have fans that they like to be jokers. You know what I mean? So this yeah, is one yeah. of the guys. He'll be back. Don't worry. With another account. <laughs> you would like, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to read through them now. I got them you open would love on the Hasher. Yeah, Hasher came in. Uh, so what I wanted to say, Eric, actually, is... Can you like, ask me a fucking question? <laughs> no, <laughs> <it's> not- <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, 
fuck? I go, I start, he asks me a question, I give you an answer, the fucking comment comes up, you forget what you're talking about, like, what's going on here? Are you stoned? Okay, you okay. drugs? Let, let's get back to what I was saying about you, yours, okay, listen, he, what he said with his comment, that he's like, you're really entertaining, this, that, is that, you're just a guy that's just like, let's shoot the shit, right? Yeah, let's that's the whole the idea. Uh, you know, usually the people that I get, he's saying are organized, which is true, it's organized, it's like, they're scared to say certain things. You're just an all balls out type of guy, and that's what they like. You understand? I gotta so, be me. I gotta be me, Ange. I gotta be you me. You gotta be you, bro. But listen, my, my next question. Okay, is, <laughs> I don't know if I've answered any of your questions yet. I really my next don't. question. My next question is, okay, have you ever said something in a comedy skit, wherever you were doing comedy, that people criticize you for saying? Never in my life. I'm clean. I'm a clean comedian. Never. No. For real. Never. Never, 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 never. I mean, really? that I That's know That's surprising, of. dude. That's surprising. No, because, you like, know. I, I'm a big, uh, you know, kind of uh, energetic guy. I do the big, you've, if you see my comedy, <laughs> it's all over the place. But I've always believed and I like to make everyone feel comfortable. I don't do anything too controversial. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, go on, I don't go on any topics like, uh, you know, abortion or cancer or those like things that people get heated up about. So I've never really... Done. That's never okay, really happened. So you're basically saying you don't have to make fun of people. You don't have to be no, racist. You no, don't have to do things like that. No, to get, make that's a cheap. It's cheap, Ange. It's okay, a cheap I way. I love that, bro. Respect, dude. It's, yeah, you know, I, I tell my my story. I tell my travel stories, my dating yeah. stories, my background stories. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Someone asked about. Oh, don't bring that up. I'll go. <laughs> I'll do. Uh, see, this is the you thing. Do foot the, pictures or no? No, fuck. How much we paying? <laughs> I got yeah, feet. how much you paying, Dion? I was going to say, uh, every, every man's got a fucking price. Eric, you know what Eric, I mean? let me ask you a question. It's not on this board, but I'm asking you a question. Only fans, would you ever do that? Would you ever consider if, doing if that? The way my career's going, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe. <laughs> I was oh, making a lot of money. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You got to do what you got to do. You got to adapt with the times, right, Eric? Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever. I, I mean, I, it, it, things will come back eventually, but the thing is, it's like, you know, you don't know if it'll, if it'll be the same and everything. It's like... Big events. Listen, Eric, we're going to talk about that later, but I just want to say something because I work in a hospital, right? Yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, Eric, uh, it, w it wouldn't be a secret to say like we're literally at double or triple capacity. Like it's just like insane, dude. I work in the emergency. Guys, I want to tell you one thing, okay? It's not about the cases anymore. It's about the backlog now. Right, Eric? Okay, yeah, well, doctor, it, no, 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 because I'm, I'm no fucking doctor, Ange, but no, I th obviously things that got pushed back because of the emergency of, of COVID, there's some, um, uh, if you knew the show, we throw questions, I guess, in the trash, this is a common TV show, so, yeah, so why the fuck is he asking me questions then? Um, but yeah, no, I, I can understand that there was elective surgeries or other kind of surgeries or other kind of sicknesses coming in that they couldn't deal with that could get pushed yeah. away. So there's probably a backlog. I mean, I don't, I don't work in the hospital. I, I used to date a nurse. We broke up, so I don't know what's going on over there. Like, what the fuck? Just, uh, just so, we'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So listen, I want to know, Eric. Uh, obviously, you said that you never got criticized, but come on, if you're gonna tell me that you never bombed, your no, life, I've bombed before, but it wasn't okay. on a controversial stuff. It was just like yeah, yeah. So that's what I want to know. I want to know what was your your. I want to know what was your best performance. First of all, your most memorable performance. When was mm -hmm. that? Well, when I opened for Sebastian, that was a huge deal. Uh, there was yeah, of course. a thousand people there. It's one of my comedy idols. Uh, I was in a smaller theater. It was at the Burlington Performing Arts Center. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was it was massive. You know, I, yeah, I love course. that. I, I talk often about a show that I did in a town called Climax, Saskatchewan. Population of the town is 150 people, and I sold 130 mm -hmm. tickets. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I know. You can sell out, bro. Like, I, yeah. I listen, guys. I went to Eric Johnson's New Year's show. It was, uh, it was amazing, guys. It was on Zoom, right there. Yeah, I did it in this basement. This is where I set everything up. He did it in yeah. his basement, guys. He's an amazing guy, okay? He's very talented. He works very hard. You guys got to understand that. Uh, guys, mega shout out to Peter Bowen. He came in the building. And also Fortnite King came in the building. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm pretty sure you know Peter Bowen, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Great comedian, yeah. Great yeah. comedian, great, great, and you've worked alongside him, maybe at the comedy works. Yeah, comedy nest. Uh, met him there once, and then we've been on a couple podcasts together. He's a good cat. I like him a lot. Okay, okay. So yeah, so now you told me about your most memorable. Now I want to know, Eric, when's the time that you was like you really weren't? It just wasn't your night. You bombed. I want to know about that, Eric. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've had some bad nights. Uh, you know, there's sometimes the audience is just too drunk. Sometimes it's the fault of the venue where they don't have a proper stage or proper lighting or proper sound so people can't really hear you or see you so they start talking yeah. over you you know situations like that um 
you know, I, th- there's been plenty of stuff. I, at one time, I, some guy was trying to heckle me, and I fucking I told I told who I thought was security to kick him out. The guy wasn't security, so the guy stood up and tried to fight me. So he rushed the stage, and I I picked up a stool and tried to swing it at him. And uh, you know, there's things like that going on. Uh, but other than that, again, I, I uh, <laughs> Eric, do you get play? I do use a forbidden. I don't understand what this. I don't understand what this means. You don't get it? No. Okay, he's saying you get action basically, or you use the forbidden website. You <laughs> talking about like do I do I fuck chicks or do I jerk off? Is that what he's asking? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! See, this is here's the thing about this show, Eric. Have you ever been shocked by Peter being like I don't I don't even know who that is. <laughs> See, this is the problem with this show. Is, is yeah. I think it's entertaining. It's crazy. It's off the wall. <laughs> but then these fucking YouTube trolls. I mean, some of them are your friends, yeah, but then some that's... of them are fake accounts, and they talk yeah. about dick length and foot pics <laughs> and stuff. And then, like an idiot, you fucking put them up on the screen, so then it yeah, curtails yeah. the whole experience. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, Eric? Like, listen, I wouldn't put them up if I if I knew you weren't like the type to get offended. And stuff no, like I don't that. give a fuck. I'm trying to help you out. I, this yeah, is, it's hey, funny. Like, like you know. Th- you know, at the end of the day, it's like they're they're, they're getting it going. But you know, like uh, like I said, that's that's what they're there for. <laughs> YouTube is like that, Eric. Eric, uh, YouTube, it's like that on TikTok, and TikTok is getting really bad with the trolls, by the way. Very yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable, dude. Like everybody comes in and says, "Are you Muslim?" Like uh, I'm making it a joke. You know what I mean? Like it's just really dumb. Yeah, no, it sounds great. Uh, <laughs> Are you on TikTok, by the way? Eric yeah, Johnson? I just started using TikTok. Eric Johnston, who on there too? I put some videos up. <laughs> Oh, yeah? People. Okay, I got to check it out, dude. Are um, you being in the show? See, this is what I'm talking about, Inch. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. He's from Japan. That's yeah, why he's not as well. Well, fuck. English. But uh, listen, Eric, in Toronto, okay, there's a certain crowd, okay? In Montreal, there's a certain crowd. Like, you've been to both. You've done shows in both. Yeah, so like, I wanna a, know. like 400 in both. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, dude, what's the difference between the crowd in Toronto and the crowd in Montreal and what I mean by that is it is it harder to make people laugh in Toronto? What are they expecting over there? No, you know I, mean? I think it's it's hard anywhere, right? You got to be funny. You got to be good. You know, that's uh, I love your energy, Eric. I take advantage of Angie's gullibility. Let me know if you want a video of trolling and chicken and forbidden website live. Okay, yeah, <laughs> send that to me for sure. Um, and Ange still doesn't listen to me. Puts the fucking comments up as I'm trying to answer a question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know the difference is the difference is this: you got to be funny no matter what, no matter where you go. Yeah. You got to bring your shit. You got to bring your A game. You got to be. You got to kill whatever. You know the difference between Toronto and Montreal is not much, other than the sense that people from Montreal are, are very patriotically proud, as they should be. Montreal is a great city. Yeah. You know Toronto. Most people aren't from Toronto who live in Toronto, so you could do more kind of broad, general kind of Canadian stuff. Whereas in Montreal, they want to hear you talk about. St. Leonard, and they want to hear you talk about super sex, and they want to hear you talk about those things because they're so like, we are Montrealers, yeah, and you yeah. know, that's the only subtle difference you have to make, and then I just, you do my regular shit, and then just fucking kill, that's it, that's all, that's all you have to do. But when you come to Montreal, okay, do they look at you like you're almost like an outsider because you're from no, Toronto? No, I think they respect that there's people coming into the city from different places. You know, it's a, it's a home of just for laughs. They know that they got international comedians coming from all over the world. You know, yeah. I just happen to come from Hamilton. But, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. I think people, especially when they come to the show, like my last couple of shows in Montreal have been sold out. So obviously really? it's working really? in, in some way. Yeah. Where, so. where were your shows? Uh well, there's been sold out shows at the at the at the uh, comedy works, um, okay. and the and then the and the comedy nest, and also the Katrina Cup Club Lounge. I sold that out on my last tour. They okay. sold 150 tickets to like the third floor of this restaurant on Crescent <laughs> Street, and yeah. uh, they had to bring in an extra like 25 chairs because they had to they sold another extra 25 tickets. So people were wow. packed in there. Yeah. You know, so I'm. Let me just bring this up. It's an important point, I think, Eric. Guys, if you're a comedian, uh, anything you're doing live, guys, or you're doing it like you got to sell tickets, right, Eric? Yes. And that's a point that you were driving in uh, around Christmas time. You're like, you got to sell tickets. You got to get people to show up, right? So that's yeah. like people don't understand that. You know what I mean? Like, don't even think you're semi pro or whatever. If you can't sell the tickets, you can't get your people to come. You understand? So it's like it's a, it's a driving thing that I was talking about. The, no, yeah, the you got to promote your business. It's a business. It's called show yeah. business. Yeah, so exactly. So you got to promote that, sell the tickets, get the people in the room. It takes a lot of social media presence. It takes a lot of that shit, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but and it just takes a lot of work and it takes a long time of doing it. 
You know, you mm-hmm. gotta. It takes. It takes fucking. You know, it takes. It took me five years before of doing it every night before I even got any good. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and really good. And then mm-hmm. it took another couple of years to start getting a name, and now I'm still building a name. I mean, half the people in this course, room, the half yeah. of them are fucking YouTube trolls. But I mean, they didn't know who <laughs> I was. You yeah. know, and I'm still. I mean, I'm one of the uh, the top working comics in Canada. I mean, not in, yeah. in fame level, but in terms of the amount of shows that I do. You know, mm-hmm. I work. I work. I'm probably in the top twenty five percent of guys who work the most in Canada. Yeah. So and and you know some of these people don't know who I am and they're fucking whatever yeah. asking me if I'm hiding dead bodies you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> like like what the fuck yeah exactly but like in Canada who would you put like on the pedestal like the top in Canada right now well I mean I think the top Canadian is Russell Peters he still has an amazing career and he's our guy you know he's yeah. from Brampton and blew the fuck up right and, and, I, and I heard Russell Peters is known to help people start yeah, off he's helped me out a lot too yeah he's got me put me on some shows and. He let me okay. open for him in Los Angeles, and he's given me some advice and, and insight and stuff. So, yeah, I think Russell's great. I think Russell has is known for that, for helping out his friends, especially the guys who came up with him. I mean, he was years ahead of me. I didn't start till 2010. By then, by 2010, yeah. he was already famous, you know. So, you know, I was a bit behind, but he still definitely helped me out and, and, and introduced me to some people, and he introduced me to Vince Vaughn, the actor, and introduced wow. me to Bill Burr, and, you know, just handshakes. But still, that's that's huge. So, yeah, of course. So you went to New York because I was watching uh, actually when you were on the degree to degree show and you were saying you were in New York with a bunch of like rappers and stuff. Uh, maybe rappers. I think you said you said hip hop artists, no rappers. I'm pretty sure you were in New York with Russell Peters. No, so that was in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in oh, at his was at Toronto. his Massey Hall taping. Yeah, his, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was Massey Hall at uh, in Toronto. But yeah, yeah. So Russell's like a hip hop head. So I was backstage and it was with all these like famous <laughs> hip hop artists and rappers and boxers and yeah whatever okay so raw wants you to roast his face <laughs> <laughs> raw looks like you if you got hit with shaved got hit with a shovel and got a fucking spray tan <laughs> is that good Raul? yeah that was definitely good dude that was definitely good so listen eric you know that now you know since covid we've got all these makeshift comedians <laughs> you yeah, know what i'm mean? looking all- i'm looking at one yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of them on on YouTube too, and in TikTok and Instagram, whatever. So I want to know something. How is your experience as a live performer gonna give you? Is it gonna give you that edge to the people that have never done it? Do you think they're gonna come out and you're gonna get some great new rookies in, in the comedy scene? How do you see this turn like all boiling out when uh, once COVID is over? Well, I think there's going to be an influx of not only comedians, but there's going to be an influx of audience members, which means there's going to be more shows. So there's going to be more opportunities. And I wish that the new comics, I wish them well, but I'm 10 years ahead of them. You know, it's going to take a long time for them to catch up to me. They're not going to, I'm not threatened by them. You know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to help some people. If people reach out to me and, hey, how do I do this? And how should I get into this? And how could I do that? Then, yeah, I'll do that. You know, I, I encourage anyone to start doing stand-up comedy if it's something that you believe in if it's something that you've always wanted to do then fucking do it who's stopping exactly. you you yeah. know it, you're, you know 65 to 75 percent of them are going to quit after the first year but yeah. those people who keep showing up and keep putting in the work and keep going yeah. to the open mics they're gonna as long as you don't quit after that point then you're gonna be fine you're gonna get better you're gonna do more shows you're gonna you know the, the, they talk about you know they talk about why is the rolling stones the longest living band ever they go because we didn't break up that's it. Exactly. Look, if you the longer you stay, like it's just like the people in podcasting or anybody that went on social media now since COVID. It's all about how long you're gonna last, right? At the end of the day, the longer you last, you know, like like, like there's people that are gonna that are gonna drop. You know what I mean, Eric? Yeah. Well, they they they. So, okay, put it this way: there's some people who never should have quit and did. Mm-hmm. There's people who should quit and won't. But yeah, if it. they stay in the game long enough, they're <laughs> gonna be good enough to not quit. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it, they people are gonna quit. You know, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do stand up comedy. But yeah. if you can like I said, just said, if you continue to put the work and continue writing and continue getting better, you'll be fine. You can keep yeah. going. You can start making money, you can start touring. Mm-hmm. But be, a lot of people aren't willing to take that risk. You yeah. know? Yeah. So my next question, Eric, like, you know, you know what's going on right now? There's a mental health crisis because of COVID and, and it's going to like, it's going to yeah, last can see, for I can years. See, I can see it in your fucking comments on this show. There's a mental health crisis. <laughs> well, actually, listen, this isn't a joke, but Ryocat was telling me just like, he goes to a lot of channels and people hate on him. And because, you know, they say that he's annoying and this, that, whatever, and they block him. 
And he says in Japan, listen to this, Eric. I don't know if you know, but in Japan, there's actually like a crisis of uh, just like, you know, uh, suicide. I'm not joking. Yeah, like very, like They don't have friends. Like he told me I am his friend. You understand? Like you are yeah. like, well, to you, to him, you are his friend. You understand? Like you guys are virtual friends. You know what I mean? So it's like Good. during this whole pandemic, we meet. Look, I, I have never met you, Eric. Seriously. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's crazy how we could, we, we know people, we know people virtually and we consider them like they're our best friends and like we it's crazy you know what i mean it's unbelievable but my question eric uh about the the lockdown there what, what can we do to stay motivated okay because there's a bunch of content creators that actually told me like i'm not feeling motivated today i don't see my views going up i i i this i'm bad i'm bad, that, that i want to stop uh that, i hear it all the time so what can you say to the people that are losing that have a loss of motivation uh, and let, trust me, like there's been a, like a rut that I went through that I just didn't want to be on. And like, you know what I mean? Like just a bit laziness, but also just like, you know, you feel down. Like, there's days you feel down. So how do you stay positive in these tough times? Yeah, I don't know. First of all, how find a passion. Doesn't matter what it is. It's YouTube, TikTok. Uh, it could be a good, um, you know, reader. It could be whatever you <laughs> like to do. Yeah. I don't care what it is, but if I can do it, create an action plan. <laughs> Write, uh, you know, write, um, you know, to-do lists for your week that are going to help you for the thing that you're doing. Yeah. You know, um, just stop making excuses for yourself. Everyone's depressed, okay? Everyone's sad. Everyone lost their business this year. Everyone fucking lost money this year. You know, yeah. unless, you're, unless you're the CEO of Amazon or something. Everyone else exactly. lost fucking Walmart. money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that's, that excuse is not valid anymore, okay? Yeah. So... If you're just finding a way to make excuses to make yourself feel better for not doing the thing that you're passionate about, then you've already lost. You know, I, I'm never going to stop doing what I'm doing. I don't care what it is. Wow. You know, and and nothing's going to stop me. You know, like I couldn't do I couldn't do comedy shows in in comedy clubs, so I did them in people's backyards. Couldn't do them in people's backyards anymore, so I started doing them on Zoom. Zoom happens. I do shows like this. Spring's yeah. coming again. We can go back outside. I'll start doing com a comedy back outside again. People's backyards, people's patios, whatever, businesses' mm -hmm. patios. Then the clubs open up again. I go back into the clubs. Yeah. There's, there's no stop. So it, the only person that's, that's going to get in the way of your career is you. you know, exactly. and, and I also think people need to realize that nobody cares. And, and, yeah. I, and that sounds terrible, but let me explain. Yeah. Nobody cares that you that – because you people a lot of the a lot of what people think – Mm -hmm. is I don't want to do this. I don't want to commit to this. I don't want to push myself to this because I think that people are going to think it's bad or it's cringy or it's not well produced. And then they already think you, you're already thinking what the other people are going to think. That's not fair. The reality yeah. is nobody fucking cares. You know, what people care about is when people try something. Yeah. People want to, when people say you go for it. You know, I've, I said this before on podcasts and stuff. People go, well, I have an idea for something. And I go, oh, you do? You have an idea? Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, but show me an action plan. Show me execution. Show me the fucking Instagram page. Show me the website for the thing that you're trying to do. Show me. I'll be interested. I'll even give you tips. Marketing, marketing is a big thing. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Like, you have no idea, dude. Like, I, you know, I try my best. Like, I, mean, I make an Instagram post. I, I post it. I post it like a couple days before just to, like, get people hyped. Like, some this person is coming on. Then the day of, I remind people. Because you got to remind people. They're not going to remember a week before you posted something that they're going to they're gonna be on, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. You got to. It's, it's the most of the game. Is you engaging with your following. Marketing is so important. Creating no and idea. engaging a f with your following is mm -hmm. seventy percent of it. Okay, yeah. and that's why, like you said about the comments, that's why I put their comments. You see, I put their comments so I could get them to, like, you know, be interested because a lot of the times, uh, Eric, because like, like I said, you're you're a comedian. You know how to keep a crowd in a room with podcasting uh, and being doing like lives and whatever. You gotta make the people be heard. They want to be heard. You understand? Or else they're gonna get upset and they're gonna leave. They're gonna feel like, oh, he's not listening. Do you, you understand, Eric? Yeah, no, I understand what you're doing. Yeah. I understand what you're trying to do, Ange. And I'm not mm -hmm. shitting on your show. I think if this is the platform, then go for it. You know, I just didn't yeah. know. I didn't know what this was. You know, when I came into it, I've you know, yeah. uh, where do you see your career going? Do you believe you can grow in Canada? See, that's a good question. <laughs> see, this is what yeah. I'm saying. Um, you you should reward things like this. And I'm gonna give yeah, the yeah, the, the all's good podcast a shout out, right? Yeah. 
Uh, when someone says that's a valid question for your guests, put it up. Of course, this is yeah, a great yeah. question, and I'm going to answer it after we after this little speech. But if what, but when you are you're rewarding bad behavior, you're rewarding yeah. you're rewarding. How big is your dick? Do you do feed yeah. pics? You know, you, when you reward yeah, that, like and they, I, but, yeah. But like I said, Eric, I do it because I know that you would play around with it. No, of course, of course. Hey, it was it was funny. I'm not trying to shit yeah. on you. I'm just trying to say. Yeah. It. But when people say, "Oh my God, he put my comment up. How can I one up this with something more vulgar or more crazy?" Exactly. Because when you feed a troll, what happens? Yeah, exactly. Continue, right? it, yeah. And it gets bigger and bigger. And it's 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 yeah. to be honest, it's distracting. You're asking me a question. I see how <laughs> how many millimeters is your dick? Whatever. We joke around about it. It was a it was yeah. a joke. You know, it's funny. Yeah. But when you reward that behavior, then you've created an environment where the trolls, for lack of a better word, can feed. Yeah, but you course. have something like this come in. Hey, my question to you, where do you see your career going? Do you believe you can grow in Canada and compare it to the mm -hmm. massive upward community in Texas? It's a great question. That's in my field. That's okay. what I can talk about. Yeah. So do that. Why didn't well, anyways, my question, the answer to that, that question is, is this. I think, you know, the sky's the limit. When, when COVID's over, I'm going to get back to work and do as many shows as I can anywhere I can go. You know, I think this, this, this pandemic has proven to us that there are no major markets anymore. The markets are where the comedians go. So, you know, New York and L.A. were notorious for being the markets. And then Joe yeah. Rogan moves to Texas and 500 people and 500 shows follow him. There's massive fucking... There are, are massive um, comedy shows that used to happen in New York moving to Austin because, oh, yeah. because that's where the comedians are. And with the yeah. introduction of Zoom and, and uh, the podcasting, virtual podcasting, both video and audio, you know, you could be anywhere. I could, I could be in Texas right now and be in your show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. of this, this technology with StreamYard and all that shit. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's really anywhere. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that Eric Johnston's career exists what in whatever city he's in that night. Yeah. You know, if I'm in Chicago for a week, my career is in Chicago for a week. You know, yeah. if I'm in if I'm in Newfoundland for a week, that's where my career is because that's where I'm performing. And I would also, love to go there. I would yeah. love to go to the Maritimes. Dude. Of I've course. never been there. And I've been I, there. I've, I've toured beautiful everywhere. Beautiful people there. You could keep your door open uh, in the yeah. Maritimes. That's what I'm saying, know? right? And there's a big there's a big influx of comedians going to Texas because the Texas mm -hmm. is is open, right? And that's where the work is. And it's funny okay. because a lot of these comedians who move to Texas are kind of not Joe Rogan, but you know, some mm -hmm. of the other ones that are more the hippie left side types who are like, this is a real problem. This is a pan. People are dying. Put your masks mm -hmm. on, which I believe in. Yeah. Obviously, follow the fucking rules. But yeah. I'm saying all these people who are very quick to judge you know, places like Texas, Texas opens up and they're like, all right, we're going to Texas. You know what I mean? It's very, <laughs> you know, people will do go where the work is. And that's where with my career, with my tours, is I go where the work is. You know, I, I go where I can. I go where they need me. You know, I can't. Mm. I, I go where I book and I promote in that place and I sell the tickets in that place. I get to the venue. It's sold out. I do a show. That's where my career lives. So, yeah. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I could I could end up moving to Texas. I don't know. If that's where the work is, I'll go. Exactly. Like, at the end of the day, if, look, if they give me an opportunity to go to L.A. and do something in L.A., I would go. I would drop everything and go. You know what I mean? Like, it just I want to visit L.A., Eric. Um, like, you know. Obviously, I'm not answering my. I'm not asking myself the same question I'm no, asking. No, of but course. I'm just saying, like LA, Los Angeles. Uh, by the way, Rawls from there. But I would love to go there. Why? Because there's so much opportunity with content creation and stuff like that, and, and you you could collaborate with all the other YouTubers there because that's where they are, Eric. Of course. Like, so it, it's like you know, especially with the COVID, there's a lot of restrictions. I want to do a lot of funny things uh, like out, outside. I want to do like investigations because I have a new show called The Unknown. By the way, Eric, I don't know. If okay. You saw. I haven't know, but go ahead. Um, it's basically like um, a true crime, mystery, anything we have we don't have the answer to. Yeah. So I just I just did a first episode. It was about whether ghosts are real. Okay. So next week I'm doing uh, I'm investigating the claims of time travel. So yeah. okay. So, so yeah, you're doing some real <laughs> heavy real investigation, wanky doodle stuff. Yeah, but at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, it's interesting, right? Hey, that's there's a huge market for that. I mean, I'm not in that space. Yeah. I'm not in that world. But if that's what you've chosen to do another show as, then fucking yeah. go for it and do a and show every week about it. Speak about the merch and everything, whatever. That's a reason why I'm doing it because what I want to do is create kind of like a Netflix channel where I have shows. Like I have Angie's Two Cents where I just go out and rant and debate. And I have the unknown, which I'm going to make merch for. There you go. If people really like the show, they're going to buy the merch, right? So yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you understand? And a lot of the times, like Dion was saying about my merch, it's because sometimes I just don't have the time. I put up, like I said, I wanted to put up merch. I put my logo smack in the middle. I understand, you know, like you want to put things you say. Usually it's, it's things that you say. 
that are popular, right? I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, it's a work in progress. You know what I mean? It's only it's less than a year I've been on, guys. Don't forget. You know what I mean? It's going to be a year in March, uh, second week of March. We're actually uh -huh. going to have a little party for that. It's going to be awesome. And guys, like I said, keep your head up. Be positive. Keep talking to people. Keep networking with people. Don't stop. Everything you do is a lottery ticket, Eric. Right? Every yeah, episode you, you do. You can't play the every... lottery unless you. You can't win the lottery unless you play. So yeah, you know, the, whatever you do, there'll be a good reaction, there'll be a bad reaction. But you know, as long as you kept doing it, eventually you're gonna hit a nerve in a good way, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody's gonna notice you, right, Eric? Yeah, I'm I, sure it's I based, to you, I like... based my career on that. Exactly. I'm sure it's happened to you uh, many times. So, yeah. uh, Eric. You recently, I don't know if like I don't know what the story is behind this. Maybe you could clear it up. But you recently purchased a residence in Hamilton, so I'd like to know downtown Hamilton. Yes. So it sounds really ritzy, and uh, why don't you tell us about that? Okay, well hold on. You answer some comments. I need some more wine, especially for this story. The bottle's just like five okay, feet no from problem. me. Okay, no You problem. you talk to your fans. I'll come back and tell you this story. Okay, no Go problem. Ahead. Uh, okay. My question for Eric, when you go to shows, are you always nervous, have butterflies, or has that died down after the years of practicing shows? Also, how many inches are you packing? <laughs> okay, guys, uh, Dion, those questions will not be answered with Eric. He doesn't want to answer those questions, okay? So, uh, like I said, we'll have to wait for him to come here to answer that, but um, okay, he's back. <laughs> Eric's back. Eric, you have a question. Ignore the second part of the question, okay? But um, what Dion, because this is Dion. Dion is saying, he's saying, do you still have butterflies when you get on the, the, the stage? Do you still, like, feel butterflies? Do you get nervous? You know what I mean? Like, how do you feel before you're about to perform? Yeah, I get excited. I used to get nervous earlier in my career. I don't even know if nervous yeah. was the word. Just, you know, and scared isn't the word either. I guess it would be nervous. Um, before you can go, Okay, I'll get to that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't get nervous anymore. I get excited. I kind of feel like a kind of like a bull in a china shop. Like I'm like, a, you know, I want to jump for it and get, and I'm just waiting for the gate to open and this, you know, the thing slides, flies open and the bull takes off. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that before a show, you know, there has been big shows that, um, um, there has been big shows that I've done and I have been more nervous, you know, earlier in my career, I was used to get like dry mouth, you know, like a 10 minute set, like I'd be in the middle of like a 10 minute set and my mouth would be like, like I just, just from like the overwhelming, you know, pressure, you know, of mm -hmm. doing it. Now I can fucking do an hour without a glass of water. I don't give a shit. I mean, I, mean, I do, I do it all the time. So, yeah. um, it, uh, it depends on the gig. It depends on the venue. I mean, the last time mm -hmm. I was nervous to go on stage is when I was going on stage at the comedy store. If anyone knows about the comedy store, it's the biggest comedy venue in the world. And I was opening for Russell Peters and Jeremy Hotz and stuff. So that was, I was nervous, but then I did very well and I felt great after. So, yeah. you know, um, I'm going to go back to that question about uh, Hamilton. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to go back to the one about the bombing. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me bring it back for you. Hang on a second. It was the kids all, all good podcast. Yeah. He's going yeah to bed. Kids going to bed. Come here. Go with bombing. It was a worse show. And how did you grow from that? So, okay. I, I again, I, I was said before on the show, I, I don't bomb very often. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a real good bomb in, in probably five years just because I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm a professional and if I'm trying something new, that doesn't work. I just follow it up with a joke that I know works. So you kind of come back from that that little momentary bomb. But you know, I brought. You remember bombing earlier in my career and not doing very well. And one time, I bombed in front of a room full of all my friends and family. It was like my third show ever, and I invited everybody. It was my third show ever and first show in Hamilton. And uh, I invited like everybody in this venue was like, "You're going to be the headliner." Because it was a buddy of mine, and I was naive and didn't fucking know. And I was like, "Okay." He's like, "How much time you want to do?" I like, got the time. I had like five minutes. And uh, he's like, okay, we got you slotted for 45. And my young, like, 20-year-old brain was like, I could do this. And after about five minutes of the, my material, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, like, dig out joke ideas and kind of write them as I'm going on stage. Yeah. Which didn't work. And huh. then I started trying to do crowd work with my friends and family. And yeah. it just didn't work. Like, it, it just didn't make sense. I'm like, hey, remember that time we got drunk? Uh in that place and the guy's like yeah. yeah and i'm like that was that was fun anyways and i'm just like try i'm just bombing and i bombed for like 45 minutes but it was in a room full of all my family and friends which i oh, think okay. is the is no but it's the the worst people to bomb in front of because Why? you're trying to convince all these people that you're gonna you made the right decision to be a stand-up comedian yeah. and they see you do awful for 45 minutes again this was 10 years ago and then they start saying why are you doing this exactly uh, you know right yeah, so yeah. but you know if i could make it through that bomb like i knew after that nothing was ever that bad 
you know, even yeah. if a show didn't go well because of whatever reason, the show started late or the audience member was drunk and ruined it or whatever, whatever happened. I go, yeah, yeah well, it wasn't as bad as that time yeah. as I bombed in front of all my family and friends. So, yeah. So Ryokat is asking a few questions there, but I'm sure he could DM you and maybe get that answered. He's asking you been what's your just, childhood and stuff like that. You know, yeah, so. no, we'll talk, uh, but I could answer that. I used to be on a TV show on YTV called Splat a lot. Oh, I, yeah. don't know. I don't know if any of you guys are in watching the show or you were 12 in 2012, but uh, <laughs> I used to be on a show called Splat a lot on YTV and, uh, and all good podcasts. Thank you. Thank you for the, a real question. Uh, <laughs> 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 um and uh that's nice of you and um and yeah thank you to everyone who's commenting along i mean i'm talking shit i'm, I'm chirping the people <laughs> but uh yeah. it is it is cool that you have a following here engine yeah. it's most of the same people but uh <laughs> yeah. loyal people there you go. <laughs> yeah there you go loyal fans um yeah no i used to be on a tv show on white tv called splat a lot nice. uh you have asian friends one of my best friends is filipino next question okay. awesome. <laughs> he loves like you know asian actors and stuff so. yeah of course <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that so that condo in Hamilton, I bought one at a new build that uh, was a very good price, which is why I bought it, because I could afford it. Okay. And it was a two-bedroom two bedroom <laughs> unit, 17th floor, beautiful new build building. Um, mm -hmm. Signed the contract, gave it to my lawyer. My lawyer just found a bunch of holes. He basically found like $120,000 in hidden fees. Uh, I found uh, that the, the actual floor plan of the actual building wasn't 100% confirmed, which was going to push uh, construction back by two years. Wow. And it was already a five-year build, so that's seven years. Plus, I have to live in it for a year. So I just went, you know what, fuck this. So I pulled out. But yeah, yeah I'll probably move. Uh, when this is over, I'm probably going to move to Chicago. So, I mean. Okay, when could that be? Like a year from now? I don't know. I'm just going to. Okay. kind of wait and continue to work and continue to do shows and wherever I can locally um, and across Canada and then when that makes sense to move to Chicago I think that's going to be my first move okay. kind of really make a statement in Chicago and then move to New York or LA or Texas you know yeah why Chicago though Chicago is a massive comedy hub Okay. Um, great scene there, very Canadian because they're so like they're basically in a Canadian climate. It's Chicago is very much yeah. Canadian and weather, you know, what the weather's like and the Great Lakes and stuff. Plus, they're like mm -hmm. they're Midwest, so they get a lot of like the references and the drinking references and stuff on stage. I mm -hmm. have a really good career in Chicago. I can go to career, you know, when 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 the, when the world is normal, COVID free, you know, yeah. I can go to Chicago and do as many shows as I want because I'm just wow. you know, respected and and um, liked there by not only the fans by the comedy club owners. Wow. So that was going to be my next move. This that actually was going to yeah. move to Chicago in late 2020. Uh, yeah. This was before COVID hit, but anyways, mm -hmm. I'm here. Like I'm still I, here. Like I said, Eric, you know, like you see, a lot of my subscribers are American. So like they would love to see you go to the United States and then you would like there's just a, like you have like have, you've done shows in the US, right? Yeah, tons, tons. Chicago, awesome. okay, New York, awesome. Chicago, New York, Detroit, Northern Michigan, Atlanta, Nashville, South Florida, uh, Los Angeles. Um, wow. New, I say New Jersey. I did a week in New Jersey. Okay, so dude, you have uh, you, you're way uh, you're way up in the game compared to the Cana other Canadian comedians, dude. If you've done it, in the yeah. States. I mean, I don't know if I'm up in the game. I'm just further yeah. along in different avenues. And we're, the biggest thing you learn about the entertainment industry is we're all in the same race. We just don't know what place we're in. Yeah, you know, and yeah, but I'm just saying. Listen, like because you would be considered uh, like a, an international comedian, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you have that green card. There's a lot of people that don't have that green card. I wouldn't be willing to do comedy in the United States. No. So it, trust me, it does it does help you a lot, dude. That gives you an edge for sure, dude. You know. Yeah, for sure, man. I just I just love to do it. I don't care where it is. You know, I always say have yeah. show have show will travel. You know, I don't care yeah. where it is. I mean, I'll even go to Japan with uh, Ryukat. <laughs> Ryukat, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about if I ever go to Asia, I'm going to have to go see Ryukat. He's such a big fan. The guy is yeah. an amazing person. Uh, yeah, he makes you me laugh, dude. Like, this guy <laughs> This guy will make you laugh day in, day out. He makes memes. That's what he does. Like, he loves making memes, you know? Nice, nice. So every guest I have, he makes a meme of them. And it's the Can't most wait. Can't thing. wait for mine. Handsome comedian. Ryukat, make an Eric meme, please. Yeah, I already told him he's going to do it. I told him, Mr. Yeah. Eric. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> So, um, That's great. listen, listen, uh, Eric, I want to know about your tour because you do have a tour coming up. But I want to know about it. What's this tour about? Yeah, Eric? yeah. So I'm booking something called the Eric Johnston Campfire Comedy Tour right now. I've already booked three of, I think, 24 dates or there's quite a few dates. Um, it's so far in advance, so I'm booking it. That's why it's taken a bit. But uh, June, July, and August, I'm doing, again, something called the Eric Johnston Campfire Comedy Tour where I am performing in people's homes, at their trailers, at their campsites, at their cottages, wherever wow. they're holding any kind of 
house party or you know family get together or family and friend get together i'm showing up with this this backdrop uh which you can't see the whole thing but it's big yeah. uh you know proper stool microphone uh you know fucking spotlights um mic stand two opening acts and we're going to perform like a full show like a 90 minute show yeah so i did that last summer and i did 15 of them and then this summer i hope to do like closer to 40 of them every weekend uh, multiple yeah. shows a night in different cities and stuff and, and do as many as I can because that's the reality of this summer. There is going to be some lightening of the restrictions. People are still going to be kind of back to normal, so to speak, but not wait, but still not normal at all. Um, yeah. You know, kind of to the normal that we had last summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to have that and do people's homes. And it's great. And I mean, I love doing it. I, be, I, I made it. Oh, you so know, you're doing like an Uber comedy. Exactly. <laughs> I come to you with the jokes, Inch. Nice, nice. I, you know what? I, I think that's going to be really popular, uh, Eric, because, you know, with the whole COVID thing, for sure, it's going to be a lot more popular. That. Yeah. Like, you know, buffets are going to be like, uh, it's not going to be the buffet that we know. It's going to be the buffet that uh, that they bring it to you. Like, like, I don't know if you've been to Kanda Sushi. Maybe they don't have it in Toronto. No. So that's what it's going to be like. They bring it to your table, basically. You know what I mean? Those yeah, type of, uh, pick it off. But yeah, no, for sure, man. I think a lot of things are going to change in the world. Obviously, some of them are going to be negative. Some of them are going to be positive. Like, I yeah. haven't had, I haven't been any kind of sick. Cold, flu, food poisoning, any kind of, I haven't been any kind of sick in over a year. Me you too. Know? And that's, and that's, and usually I get a cold every three months from being on the road. I meet, shaking hands and, you know, right. meeting people and fucking whatever. I usually get sick at least every season change. So from winter to spring, spring to summer, mm -hmm. summer to fall, yeah. uh, you know, fall to winter, I always get a big cold. Like I, I'm out for like a week. I can't talk. I can't breathe. I can't fucking <laughs> move because I'm just getting sick all the time because I'm meeting people all the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's changed, obviously. But I think as things open up again, I think people are just going to be more cautious, washing their hands more. And people are going to have hand sanitizer. And if they are sick, they will wear a mask, you know. So Here's the thing, knows? actually. Before you get off, Eric, I got to ask you this question. Because we're in Quebec, but you're in Ontario. How do you think of Doug Ford's handling of the pandemic? I need an answer to this before I get off. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Here's the thing. Any politician can't do the right thing. They do one thing. They, the people from the other side chirp he does one thing which he thinks is right the people from the other side chirp. politicians are fucked no matter what they i would never be a politician i don't even have any strong points on anything and i still would never be a fucking politician it's crazy you can't do anything yeah. right you yeah. know there's there's different things that he's done that he shouldn't have done like they invested like fucking two million dollars into these wristbands that if you got too too close to somebody it would vibrate like a social distancing <laughs> wristband obviously that <laughs> That was a fucking flop, right? <laughs> but there were some things that he's done right. And yeah. again, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't think anyone, obviously, you know, the, the tagline is these are unprecedented times. Yeah, yeah. No one really, you know, other than the, the, the influenza, Spanish influenza of 1912, no one's really known what to do in these situations, right? Yeah. So these politicians, you know, unless they're the world's oldest politician, they weren't fucking there. They don't have any tips on how to handle influenza. Yeah. So they just kind of figured out what they did. And I think, you know, I think I think the biggest thing that Doug Ford has done is mm -hmm. those daily press briefings, which you, you heard from Doug Ford maybe once a month before this. Maybe. Wow. He would do. Now he's doing it like every day, one o'clock. He gives the people, he, okay. he's, he's put some money into, you know, building these things. But, you know, I don't know. There could be tons of other absolutely terrible shit that he's done. I don't know. I don't, but I'm he not, keeps you informed. That's what's good. That's what I'm that saying. Part. So, yeah, there's he doesn't – I was going to say he doesn't keep us in the dark. I'm sure there's a lot of things that he keeps in the dark. But for what he's telling us is pretty fucking honest and truthful. And he's he's so, like, goofy. Like, I like like I like a little bit of a goofball character. When, like, yeah. the other night he's like, I just want to give a shout-out to Tim Hortons. These these new freshly cracked egg egg sandwiches are just, are just <laughs> great. Like, the guy's <laughs> talking about people dying and he brings up fucking breakfast sandwiches. Are you kidding? So, yeah, so, like, you know, it was goofy. You know, it was a little yeah. ridiculous. But I was like, it was kind of charming. I was like, this guy, he's just a guy. He's a dude. <laughs> he's got a job and he has to fucking figure out how to deal with something that's no one in, in, the, in the last four or five generations have had to deal with. So, yeah. you know, I, I can't. Here's the thing. As a comedian, you shouldn't know my politics. You shouldn't know what side I'm on. You know, yeah. there's certain things on the right that I agree with. There's certain things on the left that I agree with. But I'm an entertainer, so people naturally assume that I should sway to the left because I'm an <laughs> entertainer, right? 
And yeah. but there are some things that happen on the left that I go, I don't know, I don't think so. And then that makes me more right. Here's the thing: yeah. my job is to observe both and mm -hmm. make fun of it. That's my job. Okay. You know, it's like uh, making this the show. I observed yeah. what it was. Exactly. It was a little crazy and hectic. Yeah. Yeah. I made fun of it. We kind of found a space to kind of settle. There were some real yeah. questions. I gave some real answers. Yeah. But there was times to be goofy, and there was times to go this way and exactly. go that way. I, I chirped and, that, and that's a good gift with a comedian. That's amazing. To, that's what you know, I mean. You kind of find a, find a, a comedian's ultimate goal is to find balance. You know, yeah. and and find balance and make everybody comfortable. That's why comedians That's right. would make That's great politicians. That's what entertainment is. You're entertaining. You know, yeah. people get a good laugh at you. You know, like uh, I just want but, people to forget about the bullshit of the world, not be reminded of it. Yeah, I, so, absolutely. You know, what I mean, it just you, you. Hopefully, this will be over soon. Yeah, this is much longer than we thought. I remember when it first came out, and people were like we might be in lockdown till August, and I was like, yeah, right. And now here yes. we are, the following March. And uh, it's fucked. So it's like, yeah. we, we didn't know this was going to happen. We don't know how we're going to get out of it. We don't know what we're going to do. But, you know, we're figuring it out. I, I it, it, helped me, it hurt my career massively. I lost, you know, in that first month of lockdown. Okay, so you think you lost followers or what? No, like, not followers. I think okay. I've gained followers. Yeah. yeah but I've lost sure. money. I lost like a hundred. Yeah. Last year, I bought... I don't know. Okay, I but what do you mean like, you lost money? Like you could have had the money from the shows you would have I had shows, or? but I had probably... Forty thousand dollars worth of shows booked Shit. that got canceled. Okay, so that's a loss. Plus, you know who else knows what else I could have booked, places I've could have done, career moves I've could have made. Yeah. You know, if this didn't happen, there could have been TV show opportunities, there could have been movie opportunities. Those pay well. And so you don't know, that. right? But also now I'm on this fucking app, Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, I heard about this club. What is this? So it's thing? it's it's crazy. It's like a social media networking app it's basically okay. like live podcast you should get on it i'll send you a link if you have an iphone yeah you know what i think i'm gonna because i see a lot of people doing it for tiktok influencers and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah yeah so yeah. you just basically run rooms so you can have the end show people can come in and you can and random them. people come in or what yeah 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 they raise their hand you can bring them up to the stage they ask a question oh, really? yeah 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 so it's like put it this way it'd be a little hectic because your following is obviously crazy yeah. so <laughs> but you well, know you know what it is it's a lot of younger kids you know yeah, yeah. like to crack jokes it's hard yeah no of course yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bring you down here baby i'm just telling you anyway yeah, so i got yeah, on yeah. that I've, I've been on clubhouse for a week i'm up close to 600 followers on instagram that takes that would take a year for me to do on clubhouse games. yeah okay i gotta get in this clubhouse yeah, i'll send you a link bro if you got okay. it it's, only, it's iphone only though and you look like an android guy <laughs> I used to have an iPhone. I regret that I got an Android because it's okay. terrible. I knew it. Like, and I gotta wait a year and a half. But mm. anyways, look, I have a, a, an iPhone eight though, so I mean. Yeah, you probably open it on that. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. So, and this clubhouse thing, like I said, you can have random people come in and like a random like. Like you could join random clubhouses? How does this work? Yeah, so it's basically like a hallway of different rooms. You know, you go into the hallway and you can see all these different rooms of, you know, I run a room on there called Canadians Connecting on Clubhouse. It has, oh, cool. I have, I've had 600 members in there at a time. And okay. people come in, they raise their hand, they come off the stage. That's etiquette that you keep your mic muted till you have something to say, you say it. And then people respond. You can. And there's a questions. lot of people on this app. Like, yeah, there's I mean? millions, and there's celebrities on it. Yeah. Like I was talking to the guys from Jersey Shore. Like it's like what? Like to oh the like you, like they're talking. I'm talking. Like they're like how we're talking right now. I could do on yeah. this app with people. It's like being. I'd say I equate it's like being on like the ground floor of Twitter when Twitter yeah. first started and all the celebrities were getting and you could like tweet them and the celebrities would respond to you right away. Yeah. It's like that, but with your voice, you can be like, "Hey, Vinny." Uh, in season 12, whatever, blah, 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 blah. What did you think about this that happened? And then he go, hey, man, great question. Actually, in that, it's like, it's like a... He'll actually it, answer you. Yeah, it's oh, basically, it's like, a, it's like a, it's like Comic Con and a TED Talk and a podcast all happening at the same time. And it's okay. live. So, like, I could say, i use my vape as an example. I probably said, hey, hey Ange, <laughs> I hear you're doing a podcast. I heard you're doing a podcast tonight with Eric Johnson. What's that like? You hear it and go, yeah, yeah, actually, man, I am doing a podcast with Eric Johnson. It's going pretty well. You know, it's like, boom. It's like it, it's, it happens instantaneously. Wow. It's pretty yeah, crazy. I definitely have to get on this clubhouse thing because people were talking to me about it, uh, about this clubhouse thing, and I see people TikTok doing it. And, you know, that's the biggest struggle right now. Like like I said, I started online because that's all I, I, I was able – that's all we're able to do with this whole lockdown thing. So, you know, I, I'm just, I can't wait till things open up. We could do like, we could do even charity events. We could do networking events, galas, you know, like where we can meet new people, skits. I want to do stuff. 
I want to get more involved with film, like you know. So there's just like well, the well, endless yeah, it just, opportunities. It, it, it just know? sounds like you got a lot of ideas. Start, you know, start making yeah. action plans and execution plans. You know, that's, that's right, the biggest yeah. thing. Everyone's got ideas, but you got to have find a way to execute it. You know. Yeah. And that's like for example, my show, The Unknown. I could do The Unknown Montreal and then explore uh, Montreal mysteries and go well, out there. Take and, a camera and out there and film it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, you, know. you got opportunities, kid. You'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, Eric, thank you very much for coming. Uh, you were great. And like I said, dude, when you're in Montreal, bro, ring me up. Buzz I will. Me. <laughs> I will. I'll and give if you, you a show. Let me know, dude. I'll be in the front row. I promise. For sure. Uh, I won't, yeah, I won't make fun of you. Okay, no problem. The All's Good Podcast said so. I thought he was in bed, but he stayed up because he loves you, I guess. <laughs> he said, uh, right, can't sleep. Eric, uh, whoa, hang on a second. Message retracted. You're not sure why he rejected the message, but it looked like he was going to ask you a question. But anyways, uh, the All Goods Podcast, what did you want to say? If you're still around, if not, it's all good. I can't uh, see it. I we'll just give see him it. a couple seconds. Yeah, he had to retract it. Maybe he wrote it wrong or something. It usually happens when I write yeah. something. And then, uh, oh, I see something again. Right, I can't sleep. Eric, obviously, I haven't seen your content. But have you considered creating a character for your shows like Fahim Anwar? Do you know who that is? Yeah, yeah, Fahim's great. Yeah, I don't know. I I think character work is interesting. Um, obviously, you considered creating a character. Yeah, so, you know, I've been an actor for a long time. I find some of those guys who do characters on stage, I think it's great. I think it's hilarious. I kind of try to remain just me on stage and then keep, um, you know, keep the show to you know my truth my comedy whatever and then do my character shit on tiktok or on instagram or whatever that's just the kind of way that i've gone about it but it's a good question i mean i think some of the guys who have done it there's a uh there's a great greek comic uh, named uh Giannis in uh, new york and he does a greek character on stage sometimes and it kills does really well you know mm -hmm. i just it's just not it's just not me you know i just I, Who, who's fahim anwar who is fahim anwar is great he's a he's a um i believe he's egyptian lives in okay. los angeles he's actually managed by a friend of mine yeah. and uh he's blown up he's done a bunch of different uh, tv shows and uh, movies and stand-up specials and he does some different character work on stage and he's great great comedian Okay, honestly. And also, and the All's Good podcast is actually from Northern Ireland. Uh, they're from the UK. Oh, great. So, uh, just wondering, Eric, would you ever go to Europe? Of course. If the opportunity came, I mean, I could only pretty much only do the English working. There's English speaking countries, obviously, but there's also countries that don't speak English but have English comedy clubs for their visitors. So, but yeah. you know, that's a very uh, spe not specific. It actually has to be a very general brand of comedy because you don't yeah. know you don't know if you have someone in the audience from Ireland or from from uh, <laughs> English speaking Spain or from Germany or wherever. Yeah. wherever if they speak English. Or Australia, you know, you kind of got to keep your comedy more general, which I yeah. do anyways, but you have to really generalize it because, you know, I can't do jokes about Canadian TV shows that I watched growing up when no one, exactly. you know, from limited, Germany. Limited, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think it would take a lot of work for me to get kind of a proper set, but I'd go. Fuck it. And also care. the, it would probably be expensive to go to, go to travel there and everything. Yeah. Has to be a I mean, really good opportunity. I mean. Yeah. I think what you would do is just, they have all those cheap flights to Iceland all the time. I do <laughs> one of those. And then yeah. once I'm in Iceland, I just bounce around Europe and do as much as I can. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, to be honest, the best work to do in comedy is probably in America. There isn't a much of a platform for it. In Europe. That's what he's saying, and I think it's true. In Europe, I haven't heard of a big comedy show. Yeah, no. I it, there's there's the Edinburgh Comedy <laughs> Festival that happens uh, in uh, in Scotland, which is huge. And there's you know some big comedy clubs in London, the the Comedy Store in London. There's a bunch of other comedy yeah. rooms in London and and uh, all over the UK. But it's tough. It's tough audiences there. That you know that's a whole culture. Really where, tough audiences. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think in, especially in the UK and and uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, all those places, the whole culture is kind of taking the piss out of you. That's the whole thing, right? And they're actually offended. Hey, eh? they get offended. Trust no, me. I think it's it's actually it's uh, from my experience from working with European comics, it's not offended. It's it's kind of like a you know it's they <laughs> they take taking the piss out of you really far. You know, Canadians yeah. will say something kind of. Um, uh, you know, something kind of offensive or whatever. And then they'll go, oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, I found with comedians from the UK or clubs that I've seen in the UK, they really take it to the point where you think like, I'm going to have to fight this guy. And then they go, oh, I'm just fucking with you. And then, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's really, they really push it. And that, and that's worked its way into and the comedy. And it can get violent scene. too, eh? Get yeah. Violent. I mean, plus, uh, you know, you, you've known that's where all the soccer hooligans are from, from the UK. Exactly. You know, they'll, like, they'll I, fight wouldn't, you. I wouldn't screw with a European, you know No, I mean? like, no, they don't fuck around. <laughs> 
Awesome, awesome. So listen, Eric, like I said, thank you very much for coming, dude. We're definitely going to hook up. But not Okay. Well, <laughs> I know, know what, what you mean. mean. We're going to okay. hang out. I know. <laughs> hang out, Watch hang out. the fucking terminology. <laughs> You're going to get canceled. Uh, you but go. no, for sure, man. Actually, I'm in Montreal. Eric, I'll hit you up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I actually almost got canceled, uh, like I think it was maybe five months ago. So uh, it was like this random girl, the bitch that came in here. And she's like, <laughs> you get canceled just by saying that. Well, listen, no, no, not about that. She's like, why are you having a little kid on stream or whatever? She got upset, whatever. She made like she was a truther. You know what a truther is? A truther. It's like those people that just start controversy and they make videos. You know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. But then come to know that she was like some crazy bitch from New York who CPS – was called on her like 15 times you know what i mean uh -huh. she just creates bullshit and rumors and so anyways, yeah you got to be uh, careful on the internet man people are crazy yeah. you know i just yeah. um but yeah see and they're gonna do things just so your following goes to their page you know what i mean like yeah that's what and that's what i'm saying when you do this on this show like you had some real questions come in i gave some real answers yeah. but when people are trolling you yeah. and you put them up on the fucking screen then they go oh this yeah. guy puts trolls up let's go but and that's why this here. happened this it happened with hasher okay I put like I think one a question that was like it was like obviously something to get Asher mad, and then he's like, "Oh, what the hell?" He got upset, Asher. You know, so I, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't do it anymore. You know. Well, of course. So yeah, uh, agree with everything Eric said. Yeah, of course. Uh, people on the internet are crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a genius. Well, absolutely. What can I say? Yeah, I remember um, she, she almost shut down the Anti TV show, Eric. No joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, I actually was like. Because, like, you know, you got a lot of hate after, right? Like, all her followers were, like, parents and stuff. They're just, like, losing it. And, like, well, what? Like, I don't understand what you did. You had a kid on this, on this no, show? No, like, you know, like, the panel? Uh-huh. They were saying, oh, you had a kid on the panel, whatever. So she was, like, basically trying to cancel me. So, anyways. Oh, uh, okay. That's why now, whenever someone comes on StreamYard, if they're under the age of 18, they don't show their face. So that's, like, a rule I did. But YouTube, YouTube didn't ban me or anything. It, was, it had nothing to do with YouTube. It was just this crazy bitch coming up with... Uh, false statements and shit like that, you know what I mean? Just causing shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta be um, careful, man. It's crazy out there. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, yeah. if all your crazy fans want to follow me, it's Eric Johnson. Who? Uh <laughs> That's right, guys. Listen, if you want to follow Eric, hit the the chat at the top, guys. If you're watching the replay, for those of you guys that are gonna be watching the replay, please, guys, go follow Eric Johnson. Who, if you're in Canada, guys, go check out his shows. And he's gonna be in all over the United States. Uh, he's gonna be in Chicago soon. So all soon. Like well, I mean, too, hopefully, but. who knows. <laughs> Exactly. So, guys, support Eric Johnson. Like I said, thank you for coming, guys. Ange and Eric are about to sign out, guys, okay? Sorry, I was checking Take to see what, which one of you guys followed me. Hey, thank you for uh, having okay. me. I'll see no you problem. another time, okay? No problem, guys. Yeah, you know, we'll definitely have Eric on again, and maybe we'll we'll come up with some kind of a topic that we could zoom in on, you know, for sure. Uh, I always like to have people to come and uh, get their opinion on certain topics, you know, so... Uh, for yeah. sure. Well, let me know, dude. Um, I'll be yeah. here. You're a great no guy, problem. great host. Uh, it gets a little crazy in here, but that's okay. I think that's I think that's the uh, energy of the show. So cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Eric Johnson and Ange are signing out. Take care, guys. Ciao, 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 ciao. ciao, ciao.